Hello, I'm Avery or Hazel or Kylie. You can just pick one. I don't care. Hello, I am Lily. And Candace! Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Explosions. <laughs> uh, anyway, welcome to the From the Closet podcast. Today, we are covering Phineas and Ferb, the movie Candace Against the Universe. Uh, so, obviously, this episode will contain spoilers for that movie. If you've been holding out on watching the movie... Like, I, I get it. A lot of the times when something comes out years after uh, the show ends, it's just a s shitty cash grab. But this is actually a really good movie, and I do recommend you go see it. I do recommend this um, as well, yeah. Yeah, so uh, there will be a link below to uh, to Just Watch, where you, it bleh, Just Watch will have all the links to all the places you can rent, purchase, or stream this movie. Our link Spoilers is to the is U.S. version of Disney Plus. This is a Disney Plus original movie. Yeah, but um, regardless, our links are our link is to the U.S. version of the site. If you use the Just Watch app, it will automatically redirect you to, to your country's page, and you will be able to change the country from the website's page itself if you use the website. You can join us next week. Uh, bleh. Not next week. You can join us tomorrow for Agent Carter Season 1, and next week for the MCU Phase 2 Retrospective. I have spun the wheel before recording this uh, episode, and the wheel landed on Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch Has a Glitch. So you can also join us next week for that. Why are we covering Lilo and Stitch so much now? Because the wheel's landing on it. That's where we treat the Regardless, wheel as this god. Like, the chosen one has spoken. Ah, yes, the chosen one. Uh, but never mind that we literally just picked it arbitrarily. Kind of like how they did in this movie. <laughs> um, but anyway, also in the description, you can find a link to Anchor.fm, which has links to every single platform that this podcast is on as well as links to our Instagram and Twitter, where you can be notified when we release new episodes. Also, also in the description is a link to our Patreon, where you can get access to episodes of this show early, as well as our sister show, Off the Shelf, which is about books and is exclusive to Patreon and YouTube. Um, and you can vote on future episodes of this show. Uh, with all that being said, please... Get out of here if you want to avoid spoilers, because we're going to start talking about the movie now. We don't take kindly to you folks. Yeah. Um, so, it's kind of sad that we're now at the end of Phineas and Ferb. Um, and, like, unless we do some kind of special episode talking about our favorite songs from the show... We're probably never going to talk about this show again. Honestly, and this is just my opinion, I, unless we do that show thing, I do wish we never talk about this show again, because I don't want... I feel like the show lived his life and should die. I feel... Dan um, Promeyer made this great thing, but I feel like he's trying to bring it back every chance it gets. I feel like Disney's forcing him to try to bring it back every chance well, no, they can. no, because he's actually, you know, he's giving um, some headway, you know, and then getting the Disney execs to bring them back. Like, he really does want um, these characters back in the spine, the light again. So he's inching I... his way. I don't really see that. Like, Milo Murphy's Law was its own thing, um, and the problem with that show was that, like, it it didn't really have its own identity, so it couldn't find an audience. Um, I remember with Milo Murphy's Law, he was pressuring the execs to let him bring in these characters, even having one of the previous characters as a main character in Milo Murphy's Law. Yeah, it, it was um, everything that could go wrong did, which is kind of ironic. Very. Yeah, but 
the thing is with this movie, it was great. Um, it felt like a return to what Phineas and Ferb was supposed to be Mm -hmm. instead of, uh, what they did with Milo Murphy's law. Um, so it's great. Like the songs are great. The story is entertaining. There's something slightly problematic. Mm. It's not as bad as how other things have handled this, but I'll talk about it later. Okay. But like, Pretty much all the songs are great. Even the unused songs are great. Yeah, you had me listen to literally multiple songs. And honestly, at the end of the day, it's just like, it's another uh, Phineas and Ferb song. Great. Like, it's not bad. It just feels like, I don't know, I've listened to too many. Okay, so I just noticed that for some reason, airplane mode on my laptop is turning on and off for no reason. Well, that's uh, weird. Weird. Yeah. Um, I just turned it back on because um, it turned off. Uh, and I want it to be on be- because then it can't be connected to the internet. But anyway, it, it, that that's a whole other aside. But yeah, um, I... I don't really um, agree with your particular stance. I think Phineas and Ferb songs are on the whole pretty good. I there mean, are some bad ones, I'm, but... I'm not saying that they're bad. I think because right now, my music taste is leaning more into the unusual. I've been listening to Splatoon songs for the past few days. So to hearing normal just... songs is a bit odd now (laughs) i just really enjoyed um pretty much all the songs in this movie i think adulting might be my favorite one yeah i would agree with that um definitely interesting hearing this character sing um you don't hear doofenshmirtz sing a lot no but you do hear it some uh Sometimes, like, mm-hmm. our last movie that we covered from this franchise uh, had him singing a duet with himself. Yeah, um, they don't have many songs with him, so they had to comp- uh, a compromise, um, overcompensate on that one. <laughs> but there's also some other hits, like, there's a platypus controlling me. That, uh, that will always be a good song, but... Personally, my favorite Phineas and Ferb song will always be um, You Ain't Got Rhythm. Eh, it's just Ain't Got Rhythm. Um, I actually don't think they ever say You Ain't Got Rhythm in the song. It's really I Ain't It. Yeah, it's usually I Ain't Got Rhythm. Oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know. Summer Belongs to You is really good. And this... And, and that song closed out um, a special. I don't remember what special, but I know it closed out a special. Um, it is and Ferb and then ended we, weird. And then we have a song that closes out this movie. Uh, what was it? Uh, Us Against the Universe, I think, was the name of the song. And that one was really good. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Or wasn't, like, We Are uh, but, Back or something? I forgot what We Are Back was supposed to be played for. Uh, we Are Back was in the end credits. Uh, One of, like, three songs in the end credits. And despite there being three songs in the end credits, and there being a mid credit scene, they were pretty short credits. Yeah, though, Disney Plus added um, more credits to it. They always do. I didn't, well, okay, if you were talking about, like, licensing credits at the end, I don't really count those. Mm -hmm. Because those really aren't in releases of anything else, and it's just stuff that has to be there for Disney Plus reasons. That's why I said that Disney Plus added it. (laughs) But But it's like um, um, different languages as well. Yeah. Um, it's it, it's the licensing credits in different languages, different countries, and stuff. Um, Always longer than the entire credits, unless you're watching Marvel. <laughs> yeah, in which case, sometimes you have thirty minutes of credits. Yikes! Which, like, 
it, it, it's fair because the Marvel movies, as they the longer they go, they take a lot more work and a lot more coordination from a lot more people. Still big movies, yeah. Yeah. And, like, this movie is a smaller production. It's, um... Like, it's literally made specifically to release on Disney Channel. The song, We're Back, literally has... Did I say Disney Channel? I meant Disney Plus. Yeah. I, um, I, was, about to, I was about to correct you on that one. Yeah. Um, but, regardless, uh, there's literally a line in the, in the song, We're Back, that says... On Disney Plus, you can watch our brand new movie. Wasn't that in the unused uh, line? Yeah, that's that was one of the unused lines. That's what I thought. Um, yeah. Because uh, like the song "We're Back" has extra verses that are unused. Um, you can check out that version of the song as well as the two other unused songs in the movie, uh, "Chop Away at My Heart" and "Step Into the Great Unknown." You can check those out on Spotify hmm. um, and probably some other platforms too, but that's where I listen to them, and I imagine that's where you listen to them too, right? Yeah, because that's where you told me about them. Yeah. I probably could have listened to them on YouTube. I just didn't. <laughs> yeah, and it's... It, it, I don't know. It, those are the only unused ones. Um, I didn't find any other extended versions of songs in the soundtrack playlist, hmm. so... Okay. They, I mean, that's what we're working with. Um, there could have been I, I thousands have to say, of unused songs, we just don't know about them. Because they weren't uploaded to Spotify. How dare they? <laughs> Imagine. Um, I will say, I also think Such a Beautiful Day was really good. Um, the song the movie opens with. Um, also, uh, just another thing to throw out there, CinemaSins would love this movie because no logos. <laughs> Uh, uh, this is an interesting guy. Though, why is there no logo? Because they didn't want one. Fair enough. I also really love the humor in this movie. It's, like, genuinely hilarious. Um, and they also do, like, a lot of fourth wall breaks. I mean, the entire fourth wall literally just panned out to Dan explaining the scene of how that they're going to break the fourth wall. Hey, Swampy was there, too. <laughs> At least I think that was Swampy. I think so, yeah. Um, I just forgot his name. But yeah, uh, there was that, and then there was also uh, that whole that scene nearer to the beginning of the movie where Baljeet was like, yeah, but it'll take at least a montage, and, and then... They do a flip wipe, and he's like, huh, I guess it only took a flip wipe. That was also funny. Also, a really good way to uh, preserve time. Yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it, it was funny and a great time saver. Uh, I also really love the, uh, the song that the aliens are singing. Um, I, I can't remember... Uh, the name of the song, but it's something like it, it was when Candace was about to meet their leader. Hmm. That song, just so filled with humor, <laughs> uh, and like they're, they have a fucking sponsor break in the middle of the song. That was great. The sponsor, yeah, the sponsor break was great. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's hilarious. I love the humor. Um, like, this is the Phineas and Ferb humor that I enjoy. And then there's also, um... um the spaceship inator. Oh, God, yes. The, the galactic travel inator, that's what galactic he called it. Galactic travel inator. A yeah. fucking spaceship. <laughs> and then the chicken replacinator was an interesting plot device. Um, and, you, like, the other thing, too, is, like, I just love that Buford was carrying around this canoe for the entire movie, and I'm like, yeah, that's definitely going to come into play later, somehow. <laughs> oh, and what, that what, just what seems... is it called? The um, something gun? I think, 
I think what you're referring to is Chekhov's gun. I don't know if that's the right term because I actually don't know what that term means. I just, but it re just remember it's um, if there's a gun in a play, it's going to be shot by the end. Be used by the end to the play. Yeah, um, I, I just love it that like, oh, uh, it, it just kind of seems like the writing style that they had for this show uh it just it, it just is so funny it's like yeah uh, you play it off for comedy throughout the whole movie uh but you end up using it um mm -hmm. and i think that was the key point like oh we need a way for them to get down back to earth in this scene so let's have Buford bring a canoe with them into space and have everyone make fun of him for it. But in the end, it's actually useful. But also it could be the opposite. It's like, wouldn't it be funny if we had Buford bring a canoe and we had it actually being useful for something? I, I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like the, the use of it was written first, and then the uh, the setup was written later. Also, while that's we're talking my... on, we're talking about the canoe. Um, rest in peace, canoe. <laughs> um, yeah. That was our only death in this movie. Okay, so Chekhov's gun. Uh, I I I was looking it up as we were talking. Hmm. Um, it, it's the principle, like it's a narrative principle that states that every element in a story must be necessary and irrelevant beats must be removed. Yeah. If a gun's Which, on, like, the, um, on the mantle or whatever, it will be used, and if it's not, get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. I also really love their, like that the whole, the whole plot line of the Okay, so I guess I'll talk about the problematic th thing yeah. because I, I was kind of leading into it with what I was starting to say and then I just cut myself off. Um, so basically, the main villain of this movie uh, uses a plant that emits mind-controlling spores uh, to conquer a planet, and she then tries to conquer Earth with it. Yeah. So obviously there is the issue of like robbing people of consent. However, I feel like the way they did it in this movie is uh is a bit more interesting than the way any other uh they did it with an intention because the intention was to actually have her recognizing that she's controlling everyone, but then also realizing, oh, her arrogance is her not realizing what this plant uses those spores for, and it eats her. Yeah. Also, yeah, there's something also, with um, the plant is also controlling... Like, the plant has a mind of its own, obviously, it's just going along with whatever her she says is is beneficial. Symbiotic yeah, it's relationship. Yeah, symbiotic. Yeah, um, and the thing is here, once it's no longer beneficial for the plant, it turns on her. That's the thing that. Um, so she's not really robbing people of consent, and the plant is just after its own survival. So I don't really think it's nearly as problematic as when other stories do this, because the plant is purely acting on instinct. There can um, also be, um, his mind control does exist in our world, but you can't uh, make someone do something that they wouldn't otherwise do, like, you know, jump off a bridge or something. But, like, the thing is that, like, you know, it's not nearly as bad as what we just talked about in our Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode that we recorded the other day. Or I mean, that even, might have been the um, or even in Spark. Why are we deal? wait, did we just get three episodes in a row that had some violation of this in some way? Okay, you said Sparked, but uh, I think zapped. you meant Zapped. Yeah. No. 
Okay. Spark, zap, um, don't care. <laughs> yeah, it, we got three in a row, which is one of the reasons I can confidently say this one's not really bad. Um, um, and, like, the other reason I can say that is because that's not the central conflict of this movie. The central conflict of this movie is the conflict between Candace and Phineas and Ferb. Mm -hmm. Candace is the one who needs to learn a lesson, and the lesson isn't about controlling people. The lesson's about, like, appreciating her brothers. <laughs> Unlike in Zapped. Yeah. And I do, like, in Zapped, the whole thing was like, let's push a message about consent, and it really doesn't work. Um, because, like we said in that episode, the people that need to learn the message aren't going to learn it by a Disney movie, and the people that don't need to learn the message, the movie's not going to do anything for them. Though, that's not going to stop you from not taking points off. Well, the thing is, in this movie, I don't think I'm going to take a point off. Really? Even for that Wilhelm screen? Yeah. See, I hadn't gotten to that yet. I was saying I'm not going to take a point off for the whole mind control thing. Yeah, I want to move on to... Um just in general, and move on to that Wilhelm scream. Yeah, there's a Wilhelm scream. I don't know why you keep saying Wilhelm. It's Wilhelm. Hmm. But um, I can't remember where it was. I just remember it being there. So I'm taking a point off for that. Okay. As you guys will, like... Go ahead. I just heard that. I was like, ooh, Avery's taking a point off for that. <laughs> yep. Um... Like I have said before, there is one show that we will get to where I will forgive a Wilhelm scream. And you'll know when it happens. But it was not this movie. It's definitely not this movie. But yeah, I, I think uh, the whole thing of like Candace needing to learn to not only appreciate her brothers, but appreciate what she can do uh, is important um like phineas and ferb's gift to her is showing her that she has value too and it's not necessarily about the thing that they actually gave her and <laughs> i do find it kind of funny when she's like you got me a coffee mug and i don't even drink coffee i love that <laughs> <laughs> it was great i also love uh like, Vanessa, and, um, love that she was in this movie. I also, that, like, Stacy was in this movie, too, which is kind of a surprise. And then, we have this whole joke about how, apparently, Jeremy is a LARPer, and I'm like, what? I can see it. <laughs> I just love the weak don't tell Candace. <laughs> It's like, oh my god, like, that, that is genuinely hilarious. Um, we're actually going to see some characters who LARP later in the MCU. There's going to be a whole story plot line about how Hawkeye has to get something from some LARPers and has to take part in LARPing in order to get it. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. Yeah, it, it, it's great. But, yeah, uh, I, I thought it was uh, hilarious here, and it was definitely hilarious there. Um, this might be a... Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Zeus from Gravity Falls um, made a joke about LARPing. Ah. So, this might be a hot take. Hmm. And I, I don't know. Um, I think this movie is better than the first Phineas and Ferb movie. I Honestly, I'm not sure. Well, I, I kind of like uh, the um, dynamics between, you know, Perry. I mean, oh watching God. the, the show, whole thing was... like, while I'm actually watching the show, that's kind of on the back of my mind. It's like, you know, what if this happened? So, I think it's kind of 
I like it especially for that reason. Yeah, I also really like that, like, at the end of the movie, too, uh, Candace uh, doesn't try to bust Phineas and Ferb and actively tries to prevent her mom from seeing what what's happened. Also, the fact that, um, was Doofenshmirtz's place is still on fire. Oh, yes, that... That's great, and and, and the, the there was that funny scene where um, uh, Phineas is uh, Phineas and Ferb's dad. Um, I actually can't remember. Uh, is he just Ferb's dad? Uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, Ferb's dad walks through the portal in the in their backyard, ends up at Doofenshmirtz's place on fire, and then jumps back through the portal, and he's like. And I can't remember what happened. I know something destroyed the portal. I think it turned into lint. All right. Don't ask um, how, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. There, there was that whole uh, thing that Doofenshmirtz made at the beginning of the movie that was supposed to turn the town hall into lint and then suck it up. Though I thought that... Um... That was already done and gone with, but fine, I guess not. I guess it survived the fire or something. No, there is something um, I want to say about how Harry could not uh, show himself to either the host family or Doofenshmirtz, even though in the first movie it was already clarified that in his normal state, Doofus Morris is just cannot recognize him. But does Major Monogram know that? Maybe. I mean, they do monitor Doofus Morris, as well as a lot In of the other way. villains. Either way, it's a risk because, I mean, it, it's just put simply a risk. I mean, it does that work they, down is it. that. Yeah, it does work out in his favor. It's just, um, I don't know. It's a bit interesting in that direction. They went that direction for this film. Yeah, because, like, um, the thing is, like, he has more opportunities to help them out if uh, he doesn't reveal himself to the host family. Um, and then, obviously, he can't reveal himself to Doofenshmirtz because that's actually the worst option. Harry the Platypus. Yeah, um, I don't think the host family is as stupid as Doofenshmirtz, so let's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's definitely not do that. But it was definitely entertaining, and it was also uh, entertaining when uh, Monogram was like, oh yeah, don't destroy any alien property or engage in like aggressive combat with any aliens while he's Aggressively destroying com like property and engaging in combat. <laughs> hmm. A lot of international laws were broken that day. Yeah, but also, who cares? Because who's going to be prosecuting? Certainly not the former ruler of that place. Oh, no. Also, yeah. speaking about, and we want to get into, you know, law international laws broken. I'm pretty sure that ruler just went into this new planet, mind-controlled everyone. So, I'm pretty sure that's a few laws broken as well. Well, the international yeah, doesn't have um, a Geneva Convention. Too bad that uh, we're not going to see really any of that, because, like, I mean, let, let's be real. She's captured, and she's going into the dungeon. The plant really isn't a thing anymore. I, because there was that creature that had gotten launched into orbit earlier in the movie that just finally fell back down onto the plant and killed it. Finally. The, okay, yeah. there's something I do not understand. And, well they, well, they answered how Candace was able to survive, but how the... If you're sucking up oxygen and breathing out oxygen... Why are you doing that? What is the oxygen doing for you? 
No idea. But, I mean, I don't care. Yeah, and that's just something I um, notice on my rewatch. Just wait. If, if you're just sucking up oxygen, breathing out oxygen, then you're not extracting anything from that oxygen. So why? I mean, we do that. We do that, too. Except we just add extra stuff to the oxygen when we breathe it out. I thought we, you know, you know, use the oxygen for, um, you know, and then that's what CO2. Take out some things. CO2 things. contains, we, we, CO2 contains oxygen. So it's like we breathe in oxygen and then we breathe out oxygen plus some carbon. Mm. What is carbon? Why is carbon? It's an element. Who? Because. Who is carbon? Who is your leader? You're about to meet her right now. Oh, nice. <laughs> hey, that was a really nice joke there. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I firmly, I, I really enjoy this movie. Um, but I really don't think I have too much more to say about it. Do you? No. I mean, it was a pretty short movie, I'll be honest, and not that much to comment on. Yeah, it's like, it's, we pretty much said everything. It's a great movie. Songs were great. I think adulting was the best one, because who on earth would have thought that Doofenshmirtz and Isabella would ever have a duet? Um, I mean, who the hell would thought they'd even meet up? I mean, that, to me, is not too far-fetched. They've met up a couple of times before, but... Well, I think it's time to close out on this, um... Farm... While talking about this pharmacist. <laughs> pharmacist? I need to make that joke at least once. Uh, but anyway... Uh... This, uh... This movie's critic ratings, let's get into those. IMDb gives this movie a 7.1 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes has it at 100%, which just means that nobody rated it rotten. Common Sense Media gives this movie a 4 out of 5. And 75% of Google users like this movie. That's really low for Google users. I think that's lower than what Across the Second Dimension got. Mm hmm so, um, I think it might be a hot take that I like this movie more than Across the Second Dimension. Honestly, I think it just might be a hot take that we like the movie at all. I have seen a lot of hate against this movie. I haven't, actually. It's weird. I, and it's, I go to the weird corners of the internet. I, I think this movie was good. Mm-hmm. And what does a so, good movie uh, like this deserve? Well, hmm. It's good, but I don't think um, anyone's contesting me as saying it's not 100%. Right. So, let's say 8.4. Eh, See, the funny thing was, I was going to give this movie an 8.5, and, and then there's yeah. a Wilhelm scream. <laughs> so it also gets an 8.4 from me. <laughs> Yet another movie where we have the exact same score. And still no and I, um, rating. Still no movie rating for drastically different. Yeah, like I think the biggest difference that we've ever had was Infinity Train Season 3. I don't remember what you rated it, but I think it was somewhere in the 8s, maybe the 9s, I think it was and like I gave it a 5.5. Yeah. I do really like that uh, um, that season. Um, but anyway, uh, like I said, you can join us tomorrow for uh, Agent Carter Season 1. You can join us next week for the MCU Phase 2 Retrospective and uh, uh, what did the wheel land on again? Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch has a glitch. Uh, and with all that being said, I've been Avery, that's been Lily, and we will be seeing you.